Well, hey friends, welcome back to Homemade Homestead. My name is Rachel, if you're new around here. If you've never been into freezer meals before, I highly recommend them, especially if you're about to have a baby, or if you know somebody who's gonna have a baby, this is a great way to give to that person if you never know what to get them. Freezer meals come in <laughs> so handy, even if you're not postpartum. I am just in love with freezer meals. They are so great to have if you have a busy morning or if you are just busy throughout the day. Throw some freezer meals in for dinner. Now most of these freezer meals I'm sharing with you are breakfast, but like I said, you can use them for breakfast time, you can use them for lunch, you can use them for dinner, and in there in between snacks, whatever you need them for. The ones I'm sharing with you today have been just tried and true recipes that we love as a family. I am gluten-free and after I am postpartum, I'm typically dairy-free just because my babies seem to be very colicky and that I found that the dairy-free helps with that a little bit. I did include one bonus lunch recipe just because I was making that anyway and so that'll be at the end of the video, but let's jump into all this cooking. So first off, I'm gonna start with the good old fashioned pancakes. These are the best freezer meal these are so freezer friendly. You have to try freezer pancakes if you haven't already. So I'm just gonna need a few ingredients. I'm gonna do these on my skillet. It's wonderful to cook a lot at one time. So the key to make these really scrumptious is cooking them in butter. If you ever wonder why restaurants, pancakes, or whatever you eat at a restaurant just takes so much better, it's because they probably cook them in butter. I just followed the recipe on the back of this um, package that I got from Walmart, and I did sub out almond milk for it, and I think I made it a little bit too thin. You'll see these pancakes are quite Thin, but I don't really care I will eat them up I'll make regular pancakes for the rest of the family but so these ones are mainly for me and I'm not really picky it's just food right nothing too serious I put in some sugar-free chocolate chips especially the dark chocolate chips I am a huge fan of, of chocolate and stuff so they, they kind of turned out flat and a little bit misshapen and I always get nervous when I flip a pancake. Do you guys get anxiety about that? I don't know why. It's just like get in there and just flip it over <laughs> and, and I eventually do. But the ones for the family I'm doing out of this Better Homes and Garden cookbook is their buttermilk pancakes. I've been making these for years. Uh, my whole family loves them and I actually sub out the all-purpose flour for the whole wheat flour and the only substitution that you do there is you don't use white sugar you use brown sugar and so I just followed that recipe from that good cookbook and I'm just making up a huge batch I think I like quadrupled these so on this one I'm just going to butter my skillet again and cook up these as normal Now the trick to making them not stick in the freezer, if you don't want to layer parchment in between each layer, which you totally can do, um, put parchment paper in between every single pancake, for me I'm just too lazy and I found if I let them cool completely on a drying rack, then they don't stick together because there's not that condensation inside the bags, that no moisture. So the trick, you have to make sure they are cooled completely before putting them in the gallon size Ziploc bag. But when you stack them and if they are cooled, then you don't have to worry about layering those parchment papers and they come apart really easily. You don't have to like thaw the entire bag or anything like that. You can just pop off what you want and put them in the toaster. That is my favorite way to warm these up and they come across or they come out nice and crisp on the outside but warm and just mm, like you freshly cooked them that day. The next recipe I'm gonna do is oatmeal on the go cups from the Trim Healthy Table cookbook. These are delicious and oatmeal is a great thing to be have in your diet once you're postpartum to help with your milk supply if you're choosing to breastfeed. So it, my bucket says quick oats but I'm really using old fashioned oats and I love the banana extract in there. Doing some vanilla extract, I'm out of my homemade. I need to get that going again. Um, I'm gonna sub out for the almond milk too in case this called for regular milk, but I think it calls for almond milk. But this one is just easy to throw together and cook up in the oven. So these are gonna be blueberry oatmeal muffins. 
So first I'm gonna start off with some rolled oats, about two and a half cups. Now I think I am going to double this. So next I'm gonna throw in a couple really, really ripe bananas. If you don't have ripe bananas, you can always um, pop some in the microwave and it makes them soft. But typically either my kids eat all the bananas or we have some hanging around. So to this day we had some hanging around that I decided to throw in here. We're gonna use some blueberries. We're gonna do about a cup of blueberries and then I'm gonna do some almond milk, about a half a cup of almond milk. Some baking soda, about one and a half teaspoons. And I have my little helper there beside me if you can see her. Some a sprinkle of salt. And this recipe uses egg whites. And I think I threw in three, and a, three quarters of a cup of egg whites rather than whole eggs. It just makes it less fat. I threw in a splash of banana extra, extract and some vanilla extract. And I'm sweetening mine with monk fruit sweetener about a half a cup of the sweetener of your choice. I'm gonna use paper liners just so I can freeze them in the paper liners. I did find that they stuck a little bit when I pulled them out of the freezer to thaw in the microwave, so maybe you could spray the paper liners with a little bit of um, cooking spray just so they'll lift out of the paper cups better. And I'm just using my favorite tool to scoop muffins, which is a cookie scoop. It just helps everything be uniform and then I'm gonna pop these into a 425 degree oven for about 17 to 18 minutes. And here they come out. They are so scrumptious. It's hard to stop with just one or two. You might need two, three, or four of them, <laughs> but they are really good. They are full of nutrition. So I'm just gonna label them oatmeal on the go cups. They are an email if you follow the Trim Healthy Mama plan and they are scrumptious. I hope you give these ones a try. I, they are a favorite of mine. Okay. All right, next I'm gonna get some hash browns heated up. I'm just gonna use these freezer hash browns because I had them hanging around in my freezer, but you could totally use fresh, like homemade hash browns, which I do have a video on how to make amazing hash browns, and I will definitely have that linked above and this morning I didn't catch it on film but my pan got too hot that bar cast iron pan and it actually started on fire I didn't know that was possible but I got it put out really quickly and all is well again, <laughs> again in my kitchen I'm definitely not a perfect cook by any means but I do know that if you leave them for a little while in the pan the hash browns will get nice and brown and crispy and so that's the way I like my hash browns. So these are just those freezer hash browns. I do actually prefer homemade hash browns, but like I said, I had these hanging around in my freezer. I think I got them on a sale. And so I figured use up what you have first. So I did a couple bags, I think like three, four, maybe five. And so I just cooked them up in the cast iron pan. And now we're gonna move on to eggs. I cooked up a ton of eggs and in this one I did use almond milk so then I stayed away from the dairy milk but if you're gonna set that out really make sure that you're using the original almond milk not the vanilla I have made that mistake and it does not taste good and then my favorite way to beat up eggs to get everything so nice and smooth is just grab my immersion blender and of course season everything salt and pepper but the immersion blender does a great job of just getting all the egg yolks and blending them all up nicely. So I would highly encourage you to try using your immersion blender. If you've never used it for this, it's a great way to use it. Once I got all those eggs blended up, I'm going to use my two pans just with a little bit of more oil in it. I didn't clean them out because they're just gonna get dirty again. So I just put some more olive oil and I'm just gonna scramble up these eggs. Once those eggs are done, I'm gonna use the same pans again, just kind of scrape out the eggs, all those little bits, and I'm gonna cook up a bunch of breakfast sausage. This breakfast sausage I get from Walmart in the freezer section, kind of in the center of their meat section, there's kind of some freezer bins right in the middle. I don't know a better way to describe them, but they're kind of open to the air, and I just 
they're only at like they're less than two dollars for those and I wanted to get it finer and crumbles so I a trick that I found from another youtuber is put it in your food processor if you don't want to stay around your stove for a long time just throw it in there once it's all been cooked up and give it a little pulse don't go too long because it'll just turn into like mush <laughs> but if you just give it a pulse it turns into these perfect crumbles so now I have all my stuff set ready to assemble some breakfast burritos. I've got my hash browns, my turkey sausage, my scrambled eggs, my gluten-free tortillas. There's also cheese there, but I'm gonna leave that out. These are really good tortillas, but I would recommend that you nuke them for like 10 seconds just to get them a little bit softer because I found that they tend to break, especially if you overstuff them. But for the rest of the family, I'm just gonna use these Don Julio tortillas. They're not the huge burrito size, they're like the smaller one. But now I'm just gonna assemble a little bit of egg, a little bit of sausage, a little bit of hash browns, and roll it up. And these are a huge hit. So I don't spend the time wrapping them in plastic wrap and then putting them in special freezer bags because they're gonna be gone fast, quick, and in a hurry. So I just throw them back into the bags that tortillas came into. I feel like that's a way to save on a little bit of plastic because they're already coming in plastic. So I just throw them in there. You, you don't want to leave them in there long because they will get freezer burn. So that's just a little tip there. And now I'm going to cook up even more sausage. You're probably asking yourself, well, why didn't you just cook all the sausage together when you needed it? But these ones I'm actually going to do in patties for breakfast sandwiches. So I just take off a piece and try to flatten it the best I can into little patties. They do shrink down a little bit, but this sausage, I don't know, you could probably pick a better sausage that would work a little bit better, but I found that this is great and it has really good flavor. So now I'm going to butter my wonderful griddle again. I use this for so many things. Frying eggs is another way to use this besides just French toast or pancakes so and if you crack the yolk it doesn't turn out all weird I, f I found if I leave it whole it kind of the yolk gets rubbery and so I just crack the yolk when I put it on the skillet and to melt the cheese I just put it on top um, while everything is still hot For the family, I'm gonna use these Thomas English muffins, but for me, I'm going to use a gluten-free muffin. I've got my sausage patties, those eggs with the cheese on it for the rest of the family, and my son is asking me for one. <laughs> and so I just take the English muffin, put the sausage, put the egg with it, already has the cheese melted on it, and that is the sandwich. And they thaw really well. You just have to put them, like wrap them in a towel and throw them in the microwave. You don't have to worry about thawing them overnight or anything like that. And for me, I'm using these Glutino English muffins. They were actually really good. I was worried when I got them out, they have a little bit different texture, it looks like, but eating them, they were wonderful. They are in the freezer section. I found them at Walmart. They are almost a dollar a piece, or a little bit under a dollar a piece, I think. But they were a great treat for me. So I just kept the cheese off. And they looked a little funky, I have to say, but thawing them and eating them, they were delicious. Now these ones, I didn't think I would go through that quickly, so I did take the time to wrap them individually in some plastic wrap, and then I will put those into a gallon size freezer bag and label them breakfast sandwiches, but they were really, really good, and you just thaw them in a paper towel. Make sure you take off that plastic wrap, and there you go. Next, we're gonna make some banana bread. This is one of my favorite recipes. It uses a lot of bananas. And now, oh yeah, I make mistakes. <laughs> I usually will make it with honey if I wanted to you know, make things a little bit healthier, but today I use regular sugar, but I did use some whole wheat flour, so that was a good little swap out.
This is some cooking spray. My mom gave me actually this bottle. It's not the Pam oil that's in there now. It's just some olive oil, but you can use the bottle that it came in. And I love that because you can use whatever oil you want to in there. And look at how scrumptious it came out. Mm. I want a bite of that right now. That looks so good. And you can swap it out for a gluten-free flour if you want to, but I had those oatmeal on the go cups which had a lot of bananas in them, or I'm going to make a chocolate banana muffin for me. But you could try to swap this out with some gluten-free flour if you want to. But instead, I decided I wanted some chocolate. <laughs> so I'm making these chocolate banana muffins from my Trim Healthy Table Cookbook. And it, did you guys know that you could make your own oat flour? just by grinding up oats in your food processor. So I think that's a great trick. It saves you a little money and it's fast too. Now I did a little bit of a fail. I was trying to blend everything together in my Vitamix and it kind of clumped together. So I'd highly recommend doing this in a bowl. Don't do it in your Vitamix once you get your oat flour blended. And here they just say to kind of crumple or like pull off the bananas and into pieces because you don't want it pureed and these were really good but they stuck really badly to the paper so maybe spritz those as well but they were really good I'm actually eating one right now <laughs> I really like them and especially late at night when you need a chocolatey treat that you don't want to be super unhealthy they're, they're a good alternative now we're going to make some baked oatmeal this is a family favorite we eat it quite often. So first you're going to start off with some butter. I have subbed out the sugar before for some honey here. I'm just doubling the recipe. So definitely try that if you're trying to eat a little bit healthier and don't want to have the white sugar. And I've never tried it. Oh no, I have. Yeah, I have. I've had it with coconut oil and that works out really well. But this time I just kept the butter. It seems like after I'm postpartum, I just try to stay away from most dairy, but butter doesn't seem to affect the baby. So I throw in butter where I can, but sometimes I will swap out for coconut oil if I'm feeling like melting it and scooping it out of the container. And the one thing I love about this recipe is that it uses a lot of eggs. And with chickens, we have a lot of eggs. Like right now they're laying about a dozen eggs a day. So I'm like, I, I need to cook more with eggs. Do you guys have a favorite recipe that uses a lot of eggs? Please let me know down below. This is one of the go-to. I also love the Dutch babies. They're, they're really good too. And they use a lot of eggs. So I just kept this with regular milk because this is mainly for the family, but you can totally sub out for almond milk and the coconut oil to sub out to make it dairy free. Now I'm using some cinnamon because you want to make these taste really, really good. I've seen people throw all kinds of stuff in there, fruit, applesauce, all kinds of things. But a baked oatmeal, if you've never had one, it's, it takes oatmeal up a notch. If you're not a fan of oatmeal, Try baked oatmeal because it, it doesn't get mushy like oatmeal on the stove does. It still keeps its texture. And with all that butter in there, it makes things really rich. And oh, this is a go-to for me. So I made a double batch here. And so I'm going to just put these into my 9 by 13 pans. And I'm actually going to bake this. And then once it's baked, I will cut it up into squares and then freeze it in a Ziploc bag. That way I don't have to thaw out an entire pan of this and I can just take out individual portions because like one square of this is quite filling. So I could just take out, you know, a half a pan's worth to feed all the family rather than an entire pan and then have leftovers again. Mm, doesn't that just look so good? I could dive into that right now. Mm, yep, that sounds yummy. And I, we like to serve it with some dried fruit on top with some more milk as well. And next we're gonna do a good old classic of French toast. I do have a little trick though to making your French toast even a little bit better. And the great thing with French toast is you can customize it to how much you're gonna make. So here I'm gonna make four eggs worth and about a half a cup to a cup of almond milk, 
throw in some cinnamon, my favorite tool again, the immersion blender. This way it gets everything mixed really well together and that cinnamon will incorporate so it doesn't just float to the top and that you have to stir it in every single time you put a piece of bread in. So that's the trick that I have found years ago and I'm using this Canyon gluten-free bread for me and I'm using regular Texas toast for the rest of the family. And I like the Canyon gluten-free bread. I think it's in the freezer section. You might find it in your gluten-free aisle as well. And of course cook it all in butter because that just makes everything taste a little bit better. And now just like I did with the pancakes, you want to do your French toast the same way. Let them cool completely down on a cooling rack and that way they won't stick together in the freezer and you can just pop out an individual piece of toast and then I like to warm them up in the toaster and again it just gets it crispy on the outside nice and soft on the inside and it's like you just barely cooked them they're nice and fresh and the best way to cut these is with a pizza cutter and you can make French toast sticks just like that All right, more turkey sausage again. Now I did do this over a few days because I'm pregnant and you know, tired. So I didn't try to tackle all this in one day. That's why you see me cooking the breakfast sausage a couple different times. But this morning we are going to make black pepper gravy. I am a biscuit and gravy person, so I quadrupled it. So I cooked up my sausage and set that aside and now I am getting my butter in the pan. And there's my little helper behind me and my puppy at my feet waiting for me to drop some food. I am going to use some gluten-free flour. Now I've never tried to make this with coconut oil because I feel like it would just change the flavor. So here I am using butter and I am going to use regular milk. And if my baby isn't sensitive to dairy then I will eat this. If not then I will either let the kids have this or save it until the colicky stage is over. So I melted my butter and added my gluten-free flour to make a roux and then slowly add in my milk and this will start thickening pretty quickly. But you want to go slow here so that you don't end up with really clumpy gravy. And the star of the show, the black pepper. It calls for a lot of black pepper. And then I'm going to whisk this up. And looking at that, I'm like, dang, that pan is nice and full. Maybe I should look into getting a bigger enamel cast iron pan. Yeah, I, I think so, because I still have to add my sausage in. So I'm going to carefully try to add in that once my gravy has thickened. I am adding all the juices in too, because that is just flavor. And yeah, that looks messy. So I am going to do some biscuits now with this all-purpose flour from Costco and I'm just following the buttermilk biscuit recipe on the back but I do leave out the sugar because I want these to be a savory biscuit and I'm going to use my food processor. So I'm just following the recipe on the back, throwing in the flour and the trick to having good flaky biscuits is your butter. You want to make sure your butter is nice and cold and this actually came right out of the freezer. It is quite hard but that way it'll stay nice and cold and won't melt right away and then in the oven it'll make it'll melt and make flaky biscuits so once I got it kind of chopped I'm gonna throw it in my food processor and then I'm going to process it in there until it's little fine crumbles and that way it'll just be nice and flaky then I'm going to add in my eggs I added in four of those and my homemade buttermilk which is just regular I think I actually did almond milk there with some lemon juice in it I might have just stuck with regular milk because I did regular milk in the gravy but I'm gonna cook these on some parchment paper to make my life a little bit easier with cleanup and then instead of rolling them out I just use my hands make them into a circle and just kind of press them down and then look at how beautiful they turned out, especially for gluten-free biscuits. I thought they were really good. Nice and flaky. Mm. And then I'm gonna top it with some of that gravy. And that is just scrumptious. Are you guys biscuits and gravy friends? 
My husband is definitely not, but me, I'm like, oh yes, I will take some biscuits and gravy. I know it's like a southern thing, but oh, good biscuits and gravy. And the gravy is so simple to make. You know, my mom growing up, she would just use those packets of biscuit or of gravy mix, but I never realized how easy it is just to make some homemade gravy. So my next recipe, we are going to make breakfast sandwiches with croissants. There's a local bakery that makes amazing croissants. I don't eat them, but the family does. I also cooked up some turkey bacon. We're gonna do some cheese and I'm gonna fry some more eggs. So this one will be for the family and my husband absolutely loves these. This is one of his favorites that he asks for all the time. So again, I like to crack my yolk there with just with this shell so that they don't go all yucky and weird. I don't know, that's just what I found that works best. But you could totally fry up your eggs in a pan, but this way I can do a whole bunch at one time. I love how deep yellow the yolks are on homegrown eggs. Isn't that so, so cool? I, I've always thought that was so neat, especially if I had like store-bought eggs compared to homegrown eggs and you can see the difference in the yolk. And yeah, I think it's so cool. And they just basically eat our chicken, our, our scraps, you know, with a little bit of feed. And then you get really pretty yolks. So here I'm going to cut all of my croissants just in half because they don't come that way. You can use big croissants, but here I chose the mini croissants. I feel like that's more manageable to eat. And then I'm going to put my fried egg on each one. And then I took the turkey bacon and instead of doing a whole piece, I decided to take it and rip it in half because I felt like a whole piece was just a lot for each sandwich. So, and that way it went a little bit further. And now I'm using a cheese slicer and putting just a slice of cheese on each croissant. Now I wanted to show you how I like to wrap these. I wrap them individually and that way Whoever wants to take them for breakfast, if my husband wants to take them to work, he can do that. Or if we're going to thaw them, I do like to thaw these in the fridge overnight. Now, on these potatoes, this was kind of a meal prep for two different recipes. So I peeled all of those potatoes and then I cut some into hash browns and others I cut into cubes. And I found if I kept them in a sink full of water, it kept them from browning. And I was able to cut up a lot of potatoes to this day and not have to worry about them going brown. So I cooked up some hash browns. These are from scratch hash browns. I feel like they just taste so much better than the frozen hash browns. And I'm doing a layer on the bottom of each of these nine by 13 pans. I did this as a separate video to this breakfast casserole dish as a $5 dinner because it's super frugal. I got these potatoes on sale, I think it was 99 cents for five pounds of potatoes. And I don't remember how many I cut up. I think I did like 50 pounds of potatoes. I, I cut up a lot of potatoes, but it wasn't just for these hash brown, um, these breakfast casseroles. It's also for breakfast bowls, which you'll see in a minute. But I decided to top them off with some chopped bell peppers and some chopped onions. I figured I could try to sneak in some more veggies into my kids this way. And they didn't even complain when they um, ate one of these just the other day. So I really like them. It adds a little more flavor. And here is some of that turkey sausage that I cooked up and did my little trick of putting it through the food processor. And here I'm going to crack a whole bunch of eggs and get them going. I think I do a dozen per pan, so it's a great way to use a lot of eggs. You can sub out for a non-dairy milk, but here I am doing this for the rest of the family and I'm just doing a regular milk. And giving that a whisk, you could totally use your immersion blender here because it, it could get it nice and creamy. And then I pour that over top. And if you don't want to do dairy in this one, then you can leave the cheese off. Um, but you can also add some cheese on for the rest of the family. I think I just did some mild cheddar and then top that off. Now with these casseroles, you want to bake them before freezing them. It's super important because they kind of get a little funky in the freezer if you don't. So bake them in like a 400 degree oven for about an hour just until that middle sets. And then there is another freezer meal all done. 
All right, for our next one, we are going to do breakfast bowls. Now, I got these containers off of Amazon. I really like them except for one of the lids cracked because of the temperature. I put these in the freezer just to like freeze the potatoes, like fresh flash freeze the potatoes so they didn't like all clump together and it worked out really well. I did them on a cookie sheet and then threw them into these individual containers. I think I have about 20 of them. Um, they, you can reuse them, they're microwave safe. I really am enjoying them except for that one lid that cracked. But I did cook up a whole bunch of eggs, just scrambled those. I have some turkey sausage that I crumbled again in my food processor and some cheese on top is what we're gonna use. So in each one of these containers, I have about a potato or two that are in cubes in the bottom and then I'm going in with a cup a half a cup to a cup of scrambled eggs and my husband loves to take these to work and he says they are extremely filling and a whole lot of food he can't normally finish a whole one so maybe I should have gone a little bit less on the portion but I did go in with another half a cup of the turkey sausage per container and then I'm topping them off with some shredded cheese you could put salsa or anything like that on these hot sauce, but oh, they are so good. I just would leave the cheese off of the ones that were for me. And now I'm making a whole lot of lunch um, burritos. In this mixture, I have rice. I actually used some of our goat, which we are loving. We raised goats this last year. So this is some goat meat that I have cooked up. I did a whole lot of pinto beans in my Instant Pot and a bunch of canned green chili. That adds such a great flavor to it. You could add some spices, some salsa to it, but I am using Cookie Scoop. It gives a great portion per tortilla, and then I'm going to top it off with some cheese. Now for me to make these gluten-free, I would use one of those Mission gluten-free tortillas, and then I just leave the cheese out. But my kids ask for these all the time. I decided not to individually wrap these ones because they are gonna be gone so quickly again. And here I'm just showing you how I like to fold these tortillas. I know everybody kinda has their own way, but I feel like these are better than the frozen burritos. And I feel like healthier too, because you know all the ingredients that are in it. And you can totally change this up to whatever your liking is. You can make these just bean and cheese if you don't want the beef in there or the goat meat. And because I know they're gonna be gone quickly, I don't wrap them in any plastic wrap. I just put them back into the bags that the tortillas came into. And I made a whole lot of these. I think like 50 of these <laughs> burritos and they're, they're just, they're loved by all. Well, I hope that inspired you to make some freezer meals. Fill up that freezer and have them there at the ready. I hope you guys are having an awesome day wherever you are, and we'll talk to you in real soon. Bye-bye now.